Tracy. 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 Typical day at school, right? Wrong! Thursday was my worst nightmare. Because each Thursday I had to face the horror of Miss Peter Mock's cooking class. Well, it seems you've burnt the water again, Tracy. Yes, Miss Weedermock. Well, you know what I say. Yes, Miss Weedermock. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again, Miss Weedermock. Ugh! It's a nightmare. I'm a scientist, not a cook. I have to get out before I fail toast making. You've got no choice. The only way to get out of cooking class is to make the sports team. One small problem. I'm worse at sport than I am at cooking. I don't think so. I've eaten your cooking. If only I could be like Rhonda. Rhonda Harcourt was a sporting legend. You'd see her training every day, always listening to her music. Yeah, if you could run and jump like her, you'd make the team no worries. That's it! I will! But you haven't got a sporty bone in your body. Who needs bones? I've got science. Who's drawing out for the school sports team? That's me, Coach. McBean Tracy. Running fast, jumping high. Right, McBean. Let's see what you're made of. High jump. No worries. Not with the Tracy McBean sprung heel springers. <laughs> Long jump. Piece of cake. All you need is the legs. I always put my best foot forward. The 100 metres. Ready? It's a new world record for sure. I just can't help thinking I've forgotten something. Breaks. Uh, how'd I do, coach? Nice try, McBean. But under Rule 43, mechanical assistance is not allowed. Back to cooking class, I'm afraid. Rule 43? Oh, no one ever told me about that. I want my lawyer! I was out of the sports team before I was in. Still, the day wasn't a total loss. It was band practice. Seamus and I had been in the band from day one. To listen to us, you have to wear fireproof clothes. We are hot! Hey, look, there's Rhonda again. Every practice, there she is watching through the window. I wonder why. Maybe she digs our funky groove. Or maybe she wants to join the band. Rhonda in the band? <laughs> That'd be funny, wouldn't it? Why? Well, she wants to be in the band and you want to be in the sports team. <gasps> Seamus, you're a genius. I am. Rhonda in the band and me in the sports team. Two halves of one whole and wonderful idea. I didn't muck around. I put it to a straight. I'd get her in the band if she could get me on the sports team. She seemed to like the idea. Ah, oh, that's brilliant. I love it. Then Rhonda revealed we had a small problem. <laughs> I can't play an instrument. Trust me, that's the easy part. The tricky bit's getting me on the sports team. Oh, let's see. There's soccer, volleyball, softball, judo, gymnastics. Uh, is there a sport called none of the above? But what things are you best at? Anything that doesn't need running or jumping or a ball of any sort. I think I've got just the thing. Top jump, Rhonda. Good raking, Tracy. OK, so I'm raking the long jump pit. But I'd made it. I was on the sports team. Ah, I tell you, Seamus, the world is a wonderful place without me in the cooking class. It's a safer place too because no one has to eat your cooking. But what about Rhonda? Relax. She doesn't have to eat my cooking either. I meant about the band. How can she get in the band if she can't play an instrument? 
She got me on the sports team and I can't play sport. But how else can she be in the band? Unless she can sing. Great idea, Seamus. OK, Rhonda, it's time you join the band. But I can't sing. You've heard me. My whole family leave the house when I sing in the shower. Ah, those days are over. With the Tracy McBean singing machine, you'll be singing like a bird. Hmm, what kind of bird? A vulture? Now, you put this helmet on and the sonic sensors pick up your voice and feed it through the machine and out through the speakers. You just select the singing style on these buttons here. Rock, opera, funky and yodelling. Trust me, Rhonda. After today, everyone will be talking about your singing. <laughs> Are you sure it will work? You haven't even tested it yet. Relax, Seamus. When have any of my inventions ever failed? Uh, don't answer that. OK, music lovers, you're in for a treat. Very well, Rhonda. L let's start with a C. Some adjustments and we'll try again tomorrow. We're not trying again. Ever. I think you put your foot in it, Tracy. Big time. Hey Rhonda, how's it going? You're not still mad about yesterday, are you? I hope you don't think it's my fault. Don't give up. I'll get you into the band. Somehow. I am still in the sports team, aren't I? You're on the team, all right, but no more raking sand for you. But I like raking sand. I can do raking sand. I'm afraid the rules have changed. To be on the sports team, you have to play sport, and I'll make sure you play every sport there is. <laughs> I was starting to think Rhonda wasn't too pleased. That somehow she blamed me for her singing audition. OK, McBean, time to soar like an eagle. <coughs> oh, not fly like an emu. What's next? It was very clear that she'd thought I'd deliberately set her up. Boo! Ah! There was only one thing I could do. Miss Guido Mark! I'm sorry, Tracy. Your place in the class has been taken. You're on the sports team now. But I'll do anything. I'll fry, I'll bake, I'll whip a fluffy batter. Oh, for the love of humanity, Miss Guido Mark, take me back. Oh, sorry. Seamus! Help! The suit is fine, Tracy. But it really doesn't solve the problem. Of course it does. Sport doesn't hurt anywhere near as much when I wear it. I mean the real problem. How to get Rhonda in the band and stop her being mad at you. Hmm. But how? <laughs> Beats me. She sings like a duck and she can't play any instrument ever invented. So maybe we'll invent one she can play. What are we looking for? We'll know when we see it, Seamus. She sure has great rhythm on the speedball. Rhythm? That's it. What's it? I'll explain later. You better hope this works. Seamus, think positive. Be confident. We can't start doubting ourselves. What could possibly go wrong? Well... You're right. We better hope this works. Ready for more training, Tracy? Ah, the big question is... Are you ready to be in the band, Rhonda? What? For it. Don't stop now. Rhonda was a hit in more ways than one, thanks to the McBean Whack and Thump Percussion Kit. Rhonda
Sandra and I were friends again, and I was back doing what I did best on the sports team. Good news, Tracy. There's been a late withdrawal. You can come back in the cooking class after all. What? Sorry, Mrs. Weedemock, but it's not just the sand raking. Tracy's our champion water bottle filler too. That's right, Miss Weedemock. Besides, we're already cooking some cool riffs. Huh? Uh, playing good music. Hit it, everyone! Oh, yes. Groovy. OK, so we weren't the best band you've ever heard, but we were the most original. And I never had to burn another piece of toast again. My brother Gordon is seriously multi-talented. He can watch TV, listen to music and play a video game all at the same time. But his real talent is in the kitchen. Gordon can turn a sandwich into a work of art. Mmm. Multi-decker ham, banana, peanut butter, chilli, cheese, strawberry jam, pickle, ice cream and hummus combo. My favourite. Yeah, Gordon is pretty special, all right. The only problem is he just can't wake up in the morning, which is not that popular with certain school principals. Late again, McBean. <sighs> yes, Mr Longbottom? Not good enough, McBean. No, Mr Longbottom. You've been late once too often. Next time, you're on suspension. Suspension! <laughs> yes, Mr Longbottom. Come on, Seamus. We don't want to be late. What for? The science club meeting, remember? Science club? Since when have you been interested in science club? What? You said so yourself. They're not interested in inventing. They're a bunch of stuck-up... I know what I said, but uh, things might have changed. What things? Just thing things. I couldn't tell Seamus, but one thing had changed, and his name was Laszlo Lambert. OK, everyone. Stand back. Laszlo was the president of the science club, and he was gorgeous. Now prepare to be amazed as it changes colour from red to blue. You're an ace, ah. Laszlo. Oh. <laughs> Extremely average. Wasn't that amazing? Love that chemical reaction. You're so atomically gifted. Uh, yeah, I know you. You're that... Uh... Tammy McBride. Uh, no, it's Tracy McBean. Yeah, that's what I said. Scientist and inventor. Glad to be aboard. Aboard? Joining the club. Makes no sense to me, but hey, I'm only your best friend. So, uh, where do we sign? Uh, here's an application form. You can bring it back next year. Next year? When you're old enough to join. Sorry, no little kids allowed. What? Hi, littlies. See ya. Why don't you go do some colouring in or something? Littlies? Who does he think he's calling littlies? Well, they know what they can do with their science club, right, Tracy? What? Oh, oh, yeah. I'm gonna get my lunch. See you at the canteen. It was totally illogical. It made no sense. After the way Laszlo treated us, why did I still want to join the science club? Let's look at this sensibly. On the one hand, he's a science snob who wouldn't know an inventor if he fell over her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Settle down. So everyone agrees with me? My fabulous guest exchange chamber will be our entry in the inter-school science fair. On the other hand, he's dreamy and totally gorgeous, which is completely irrelevant and unscientific. This was extremely confusing. I was experiencing emotions I'd never felt before. Could I be falling for a boy? Ugh, no, get real. This was nothing to do with boys. This is a matter of principle. Think I'm too young to join their club, eh? Well, I'll show them some real science. You're kidding, Tracy. Why do you want to hang out with that bunch of losers? It's the principle, Seamus. If I can invent the ultimate uninventable thing, it'll prove we should be in their club. I get you. And as soon as they let us join, we tell them to stick it up their jumpers and resign on the spot. Yes. Yeah. Sort of, maybe. We'll teach that, Laszlo. Laszlo. It's got to be something they reckon could never be done. But what? The principal said if I'm late again, he'll put me on suspension. Oh, Gordon, that's terrible. <laughs> yeah. I think I need some lunch and dessert to cheer me up. Hmm. Gordon. 
That's it! Seamus, to the caravan! Think about it, Seamus. What's the most impossible thing you could ever invent? A cheese sandwich where the edges don't curl up in the sun? Easy. More impossible than that. A tissue that doesn't get soggy when you sneeze? Open your mind, Seamus. Think the unthinkable. Believe the unbelievable. You don't mean. You couldn't. That's more than impossible. It's impossible squared. Not anymore. <gasps> is that what I think it is? You bet. An invention to get Gordon to school on time. The hardest part of getting Gordon to school was to get him out of bed. That's when it hit me. I'd invent a bed to drive him to school and get him ready on the way. The Gordon Get Ready bed would be the jewel in my inventing crown. Automated breakfast dispenser featuring a choice of cereals and juice. Gravity feed shower and solar powered scrubbers and toothbrush for that all over off to school shine. And an auto sensor wardrobe selector. Just key in your choice of fashion style and weather forecast and the bed will do the rest. On time at last, McBean. Well done. Yes, Mr. Longbottom. Uh, hey, what's all this? Hi, Laszlo. Macbeth. McBean. Yeah, that's what I said. Think we're good enough for your science club now? Mm, not bad. Oh, maybe we could stretch it to a junior associate membership. Ha! Got you where we want you. We've only got one thing to say to you, Mr. Science Club Big Shot. Right, Tracy? Yeah. Thanks, Laszlo. We'd love to join. Huh? But weren't we going to resign from the club? Wasn't that the plan? Well, yes, sort of. But they're really not so bad. They've made us junior associate members. Gordon's new bed was a big hit. In no time flat, he was the talk of the town. Morning, Gordon. Love those cornflakes. <laughs> Hope you brought an umbrella, Gordon. Looks like rain today. Hey, Gordon, I'm out of lift. Yeah, things couldn't have been better. Gordon wasn't worried about being suspended anymore. And Laszlo had started talking to me. I don't understand. What's gone wrong? It's stopped working. That's what's wrong. Looks like we don't have an entry for the science fair anymore. But we have to enter something. The reputation of the science club's on the line. But what? I think I've just found it. Uh, congratulations, Junior Associates. After much consideration, you've been made full members. <gasps> Seamus, did you hear that? Which entitles us to enter Gordon's bed in the science fair? Now, of course, you realise any trophy won becomes the property of the science club, and as president of the science club, it will uh, have my name on it. What? And uh, your invention will tour the country as part of the science fair exhibition. But please, 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 no public displays of gratitude. I don't want to wrinkle my lab coat. <laughs> you can touch it, though, if you want. It's 100% polyester, and it's fire resistant. Isn't it wonderful, Seamus? My invention in the science fair. You can't send Gordon's bed around the country. Why not? Because Gordon will be in it. So? If he's on tour, he won't be at school. And if he's not at school, he'll get suspended. Oh. That night, I couldn't sleep. I thought the science club was the most important thing in the world. But Gordon was my brother, and I couldn't get him suspended. I know. I'll have a word with Laszlo. He'll understand. No way, McBannister. Impossible. Absolutely not. But Gordon can't go on a national tour. He'll miss school. He'll get suspended. Well, I'm sorry. But it's a small price to pay for a great advance in science. And let's face it, there's no smaller sacrifice than Gordon. But his... Remember, you're science club now. And us science clubbers stick together. You've been right all along, Seamus. What can I say? I know. Well, no one treats my brother like this. Except you, sometimes. Yes, but that's only because I have to live with him. Fair enough. So what are you going to do? What a girl has to do. So, the next day at the science fair... Invention number 14, Gordon's get ready bed. It's five past nine. Where is he? Probably held up at the traffic lights. Can we have invention number 14, please? Ah, here he comes. Oh, it's about time. 
Late again, McBean. Not good enough, not good enough by a long shot. You're on suspension. <gasps> I was told this bread would deliver a boy ready for school. Ah, uh, yes, miss, it should have. But uh, I think we've been sabotaged. Nonsense! Sounds like excuses to me. Marks, please! But where is Gordon? Seamus? Oh. Ah. 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 Where's my breakfast? Gordon McBean? And he's been here for an hour, so he's not late at all. You just said he had to be at school on time, not awake and on time. I suppose I did. Well, well done, McBean. This is all your fault. How can you call yourself a scientist? I don't. I call myself a McBean! That's it! You're out of the science club. Too late. We already quit. Yeah, bye. Come to think of it, maybe Laszlo wasn't so hunky after all. Besides, who cares what people look like? Take my brother Gordon. He's a TV-watching, sandwich-eating, music-listening, game-playing legend. Only problem is he can't get up in the morning. So what? No one's perfect. Desiree Jackson was a new girl at school. And she made quite an impression. What's the big deal? She's just a girl. Even Gordon went strange. Hey, you guys! Check out my Frankenstein face! <laughs> well, stranger than normal, that is. I've never seen Gordon like this. Glassy-eyed, slack-jawed. OK, I've seen him like that plenty of times over food, but not over a girl. I don't get this boy-girl thing. Maybe it's one of those things Mum and Dad say I'll understand when I'm older, but I wouldn't count on it. Anyway, I had more important things to think about. On Saturday, the museum was holding an exhibit of Leonardo's greatest inventions. That's Leonardo da Vinci. He's my hero. I've got to go to this, Seamus. Seamus? Oh, no. Not you, too. What are they doing getting excited about Desiree? Don't they know about the Leonardo exhibit? Now that's something to get excited about. Dad, Dad, Dad! What, what, what? Can you take me to this exhibition on Saturday? Oh, sure. Dance class, Dad. Oh, dance class. Dance class? Sorry. I have to take Megan to her dance class on Saturday. Mum, exhibition, Saturday, let's go, you and me. Saturday, must work, can't go. I guess I'll have to go by myself then. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. <laughs> yeah, isn't it? I'm serious. You're too young. You'll have to go with someone older. I know, Seamus, he's three weeks older. Sorry, not old enough. No problem, I'll ask Uncle Arthur. He'd never, ever, 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 ever let me down. Sorry, Tracy, I have to let you down. I'm a little tied up this week. Don't tell me, Uncle Arthur. The motorised rollerblades again? The world is crying out for motorised rollerblades. But when will you perfect the brakes? Just one or two more crashes and I'll have it. There was only one other older person I could ask. Good. I need you to take me to an exhibition on Saturday. Now, I know you will not perform this service for free. Shall we negotiate? Gordon is listening. One chocolate bar per week for the next year. Mm. So, so. Uh, I'll do your chores for the next month. Better. OK, all your chores for the next three months. Get in there. Oh, just name it then. Whatever you want, I'll do it. Hmm. <gasps> A date. With Desiree. What? How about something easier? A million dollars, a tropical island. What, your very own planet? Desiree. I don't know about this boy-girl stuff. Where would I start? Then again, I am a girl. Think like a girl. What would I like about Gordon? What? No idea. You two can be irresistible. What's this? Hi, girls. Brady, you look so different. So handsome. All 
thanks to Smile Bright Toothpaste. You too can have a smile that no girl can resist. Thank you, Smile Bright. Really? I didn't believe it for a second. But right now, I've got no better idea. You'll have the most irresistible smile in no time. Not with Smile Bright, but with the McBean Tooth Toner. And the McBean Smile-erific Braces. <laughs> Hey, Desiree. Have you seen Gordon? Oh, look. Here he is. I said, here he is. Hi, Desiree. Hi, Gordon. Is there something you wanted? No? Okay, then. Oh, why didn't you say anything? I can't move my mouth. It's stuck. Let's forget it, Tracy. She'll never come out with me. Yes, she will. You can't give up now. Maybe Gordon needs more than just a good smile. Is this going to hurt? No, no. Well, yes and no. Well, maybe, but we'll just keep thinking of Desiree. Oh, Desiree? Do you look gorgeous or do you look gorgeous? Do I what? It was a miracle. Gordon really looked good. Unfortunately, Gordon's new face is on Gordon's old body. This was the Make Gordon Gorgeous campaign, and I was about to fight the Battle of the Bulge. As I soon found everything I needed. A wetsuit, balloons and a pump, an old corset, and some cat hair. My super hunk suit was perfect. No one could keep their eyes off Gordon. Hi, how are you doing? Let's do lunch. Check you later. The real test was about to come. Gordon, is that you? Oh, yeah. It's all me, Desiree. 100% pure Gordon. Desiree couldn't refuse to go out with Gordon now. Oh? What the? What the? Crazy! Oh, oh no. I'll never get to see that Leonardo exhibit now. This isn't the time to lie there and give up. Yes, it is. It's the perfect time. Oh, so you were embarrassed. <sighs> Humiliated. <sighs> Desiree laughed at you. Oh. There's still a chance Desiree will go out with you. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. As if. Does he won't. I'll just stay here with Boris. He likes me. Would Leonardo have backed down from a challenge like this? Me thinks not. First, I had to do a little spying. Desiree and Gordon had to have something in common. Something they could do together. But what? I can't wait till Saturday. Me too, Desiree. I love the dance class. So do I. I only wish sometimes that more boys would do it. Maybe that's it. Desiree wishes more boys would dance. And I will grant her that wish. Dance? Me? You don't like dancing? I do. I just can't do it. Hey! Hello! Stop! 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 Please! <sighs> I see what you mean, but there could be a way around it. Tomorrow at the dance class, Gordon will dance like he's never danced before. Thanks to the McBean dance matic shoes. You've heard of the Lord of the Dance? Gordon will soon be the king of the dance. So far, so good. Gordon, what are you doing? Step aside, sweet sister. Desiree, <gasps> may I have this dance? If you say no, my heart will be broken. My soul will be empty. Time to tango. Oh! Let's romp the rumba. Hey. Let's 
Let's juice it up with joy. <laughs> now, for a solo performance, let's tantalize her with tap. <laughs> The dancing, the makeover, the smiling. What's it all about? I just wanted to make a good impression. To ask you out. Is that it? Why didn't you just say so? Sure, I'll go out with you. You will? But where should we go? No problem. I know the perfect place for a date. You two don't have to hang around. Just make sure to come back and take me home. See you later. Have fun. I will. I think Gordon and Desiree will have fun too. Unless Gordon does something silly. Hey, you want to see my Frankenstein face? Stop! Gordon, don't do it! <laughs> Is that the best you can do? Here's a real Frankenstein face. Wow, that's fantastic. You're really good. Hey, what about gorilla miming? Oh, yeah, I'm really into that. <laughs> Not bad, but check this out. <laughs> Amazing! They do have something in common all the time. Yes, there's a lesson to be learnt here about this whole boy-girl thing. One that I'll never work out. I don't think even Leonardo would have a clue. But then again... It could have been any Saturday. The sound of mowing lawns, the smell of burning barbecues, but... Something wasn't right. I don't like it, Tracy. It's quiet. Too quiet. Ah! Except for the noisy bits. Seamus has an instinct for knowing something's wrong. Call it a gift, but I can feel it in my bones. Hey, small people, what's happening? Zero. We're bored. Yeah, there's nothing to do. Nothing to do? What about the playground? Sure, it may not be the most modern playground in the cosmos, but it's the place where legends were born. It's the place Costas Papadopoulos broke the one-hand hanging record. Two and a half hours. It's a new world record. Eh, uh, easy peasy, man. It's a piece of cake. And where Jim got the super splinter sliding down the seesaw. OK, Jake. Here I come. OK, I'm ready with you, huh? I'm ready now. I'm ready with you, huh? Any minute now. Ready with you, huh? Here we go, I'm ready. When you are? I'm, I'm ready. Yeah. Ah! Oh! Oh, that's Papa, gotta hurt. You young kids today, no respect for tradition. We like the playground just fine, but it's closed. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> closed? But it can't be closed. It's never closed. Have a look at the sign. It's closed. Sorry, kids! Cancel orders! But why is it closed? Closed for repairs? Closed for painting? No! Closed for demolition! It was totally illogical. Completely unbelievable. Why would anyone want to knock down the playground? There were a lot of complaints. But all the kids love the playground. Why would they complain? It wasn't the kids. It was the parents. What? The playground's old and dangerous. Remember Jim McConnelly's accident? Remember it. Hi, McBeans. Hi, Seamus. What's with the outfit? I'm in mourning. The old happy-go-lucky Seamus is no more. Crushed beneath the bulldozer's heartless blade. Oh, please. Haven't you heard? The council are building a new playground and it opens in two weeks. The next two weeks seemed to go on forever. The playground design was top secret and everyone was busting to know what it looked like. The tension was getting to everyone. Jim was the first to crack. Oh, I've cracked. It's no good. I can't stand it. Two weeks without a playground, it's more than a bacon kid. Uh, <laughs> Poor Jim. Come here, come here. Come here, Dog, Robert's got help. Hubba, hubba, hubba. Shh, shh, shh. All right, stand clear. With my special extenderscope periscope, we'll check out the new playground in no time. Top secret! Keep out! 
The big day finally arrived. Seamus even agreed to wear something more colourful. A lot more colourful. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the Stumbrush Kiss. But first we had to get through the Mayor's speech. Luckily, I brought my all-purpose boring adult remote control. I hit fast forward. I don't know how it works either, but it's good, isn't it? Boss, I declare the secret. <laughs> We'd never seen anything like it. It was a kid's worst nightmare. A safe and sound, unslippery slide so you can never go too fast. A school approved maths o cycle where the faster you pedal, the more maths questions you get to answer. Not to mention the super secure no risk swing that takes an hour to get in and out of. And even when you're in it, it's too heavy to swing anyway. It's hopeless! It's disastrous! And the worst of all, it's boring! <gasps> oh, poor Jim. Come here, Jim. <laughs> big hug, <gasps> big hug. Clearly the shock of losing an important child alike on has impacted on him severely. I just don't get it. How can our new playground be such a dud? Because it was designed by a committee. What's a committee? A random and disparate group of adults who fail to appreciate what it's like to be kids anymore. Of course! That's it. Come on, Seamus. We've got some research to do. So, how would you describe a perfect playground? Well, uh... It's, uh... Let me see. It's uh, bloodthirsty, eco-friendly... Seriously romantic. Bunch of awesome inventions that make you wanna... Uh... Until all you can do is... Eat buckets of ice cream. We spent all day finding out what kids really wanted. Now to build it. The ultimate playground. Every kid's dream. Rope ladder. Check. One parachute. Check. Bucket of piranhas. Piranhas? They eat people. Well, you can't have an Amazon River Rapids adventure slide without piranhas. Couldn't we just make do with a few cranky goldfish? Hmm. Mental note. Rethink piranhas. Seamus and I worked through the night. And by morning we were done. But by then the word was out. What is going on here? Unreal, banana peel. Out of sight, Reggie Mike. Uh, we only made some little changes to make it more kid friendly. That's outrageous. That's what it is. Rearranging council property. Yay! We've got a good mate too. What the? <laughs> I'm, I, I'm really... Not another word. I have only one thing to say to you, little missy. Can I have another wee go? Oh, oh, please please do. Do. Oh, oh, I don't mind, girl. But I don't care. It's parents first. Seamus said, if we build it, they will come. Well, they did come. But they weren't the ones we expected. The adults loved the playground so much we couldn't get them off it. And us kids had to fend for ourselves. What's for dinner? Baked beans, fried eggs and deep fried stuff. Again? But what about vegetables? Can't we at least have some greens? You want to eat green stuff? Go ahead and choose some lawn. This is not fair. Where's Mum? Uh, where do you think? Now I'll just bounce this off the crocodile, through the pit of fire and into the lion's mouth. Oh, champion putt! That's a hole in one! Yeah. Lovely day, Mr. Wong. How's work going? Who knows? I rang the office and told them I wasn't coming in again, ever. Whoa! Shall we play another round? Let's. All the adults are behaving the same. None of them act like parents anymore. They all just want to have fun. Parents having fun? It shouldn't be allowed. Hmm, we've got to do something. There are bills piling up and no one's paying them. The phone bill, the credit card bill, the electricity and water bills. So what? Not our problem. We're just kids, remember? And then there's this. A bill for the TV. They'll take it away unless someone pays it. Ah! Not the TV! Where's my piggy bank? There was only one thing for it. If they wanted to act like kids, 
we'd have to treat them like kids. OK, everyone, it's six o'clock. Time for dinner. But we're not hungry. Ah, no back chatting or you'll be grounded for a week. And no TV until you've finished your homework. But we don't have any homework. That's beside the point. Anyway, it's Wednesday night. You, you don't mean... That's right. Wednesday night is clean your rooms night. <laughs> don't look so surprised. They taught me everything I know. It was a real team effort. All us kids kept up the pressure. Our parents had to crack soon. Eight o'clock! Time for bed! No dessert till you've eaten your vegetables. OK, guys, it's time for your bath. Grab it up, grab it up, come on, easy this up. <laughs> <laughs> We had our parents on the ropes. Then the council stepped in to finish them off. Sorry! Playground's closed! Council orders! The whole city's come to a standstill! Nobody works anymore! I'm not going back to work. I'm going to the beach. Oh, oh, the beach. That's it! Time those parents got a serious talking to. <laughs> OK, parents, fun's over. Time to get back to your jobs. But we don't want to. We're enjoying ourselves too much. But we can't look after ourselves and the whole town is falling to pieces. But we've enjoyed being children so much. I know, but I think I've got the answer. <laughs> How'd you get our parents to give up so easy? I know the parent might. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Tracy. Once a month, it's Parents' Day, when they can act like total kids. But for the rest of the month, they do what parents do best. Tracy. Turn off that TV. Into your pyjamas. It's time for bed. I'm going, I'm going. Ha, huh. parents. <laughs> <laughs>